now yields have been heading higher but the rupee is keeping calm to discuss that i'm in joined by brijain puri the head of uh, markets at jp morgan and bloomberg tv india's anupriya but uh, anu some bit of liquidity concerns seem to be trickling into the market uh, 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 what can you tell us on that Exactly, Sunanda. We have seen some amount of tightness coming into the liquidity front. In fact, call money rates last time I checked are heading back towards that 9% marks and, and it's likely to stay that way for a little while. That's what uh, dealers are telling us. But as you mentioned, yields are heading higher and rupees keeping completely calm. In fact, it's so calm that the three-month implied volatility of the currency is now at a six-year low because of the big reserve rush that Dr. Rajan has been up to. On the bond yield front, we've seen uh, two important pieces of news coming out. The new 10-year auction, 8.4% will be auctioned uh, again this week and there's an aggressive auction coming in which has pushed the uh, bond yields up now to 8.49% from the 8.38 levels that we had seen earlier this week. Uh, on the other side, uh, the RBI seems to be changing the game a little bit on the bond side. They've now moved to multiple pricing as per the last release versus uniform pricing, which could also raise cost for dealers going ahead. Uh, so overall, expect yields to inch a little bit higher, but the rupee to stay very calm and quiet. But remember, August 5th is the big policy. He's not expected to do much, but it's the time he takes the podium and speaks to the media as well. So all eyes and ears on Dr. Rajan now. All right. Thanks for joining us with that, Anu. Let me welcome in Brijen Puri at this point. He's, of course, head of markets at J.P. Morgan. Brijen, you know, I want to start by talking about the entire focus that we've seen as far as the bond market goes. Now, the recent rejig really off that F, uh, FII cap. Do you see investor interest in India remaining firm? Yes, we've seen fairly strong uh, investor interest. So we saw the existing limits uh, fill up. Even on the new limits, uh, we've seen uh, a yard and a half odd, uh, which has uh, come in, uh, filling up uh, part of the five billion that the government has brought in. So definitely, I think uh, the policy credibility, both at the centre as well as uh, at the RBI, has uh, has worked well for India's image, and we've we've seen good interest from FIIs uh, looking to invest for the long term in India. Also with the uh, rupee being uh, fairly stable and projected to remain stable uh, and local interest rates remaining high, it remains uh, an attractive investment uh, opportunity. So then the argument that one can really make is why not just raise that FII cap given that the current holding by FIIs in the bond market is merely about $36 billion and you know why really the reluctance in your opinion to open up the bond markets? See, I think, uh, you know, we've traditionally had uh, the reluctance. Uh, I think the RBI has not been extremely comfortable as per sources, uh, you know, with, uh, with opening up completely. Uh, some of it has to do with history. Uh, India has not done very well uh, in the past with, uh, with huge one-off uh, inflows. We have tend to fritter it away. That's one. Second, uh, in times of uh, some international uh, pressure uh, like we saw last year on emerging markets, uh, it, a larger FI holding would mean a more difficult environment to control uh, both the uh, yields as well as the currency. So I think the RBI and the government want to take it uh, piecemeal. They want to ensure that the fundamentals are a lot sounder before we open it up completely. And, uh, and hence the reluctance uh, to open it up. Uh, you know, there's... Overall, uh, people had been talking about uh, Indian inclusion in bond indices, etc. But uh, again, that also has uh, comes with the with the same issues, and uh, hence we think that uh, we we will go in these uh, uh, small steps uh, towards uh, liberalising the uh, regime in uh, government bonds. On the other hand, uh, the corporate bonds is something where uh, enough limit is available. So probably given the relative stability and the perceived improvement in uh, fundamentals, I guess a little bit of, uh, of, a, uh, uh, of tightness in the availability of uh, the GSEC limits should also help push investors towards uh, first the quasi-sovereign and then the local credit names within the corporate space. And that's something which, uh, which should help both uh, the economy as well as the corporate bond market. So uh, it's, it's in that perspective that I think we've seen this reluctance to open up completely. 
Okay, but you know, speaking of the reluctance, we've seen a push on the part of both, uh, you know, the RBI as well as the government to try and widen this corporate bond market. But what is your own sense on interest as far as the segment goes? See, the, uh, the interest will mm. pick up. So uh, up until a year back, uh, you know, we didn't have a lot of interest in the longer end of uh, GSEX. Most of the interest was in the shorter end, uh, up to one year uh, investments. We've, uh, we've seen uh, investors cozy up to slightly higher duration. The RBI new limits come with riders on, um, on minimum residual maturity. Uh, in spite of that, uh, we are seeing a decent FI interest. So uh, it's a gradual process where, where once people uh, and investors are more comfortable with, uh, with taking a slightly higher risk, first with increasing duration, what we are seeing, and, uh, and then a uh, little bit of uh, going down on the credit curve, possibly, like I said, first the quasi-sovereigns and then into the local currency credit. All right, final quick word. Uh, you know, the new yield at the 10-year level is at 8.5%, if I'm not mistaken. What is that really indicating to you about the interest in the markets as well as the rate trajectory going ahead? So I think uh, it's, uh, it's, it's more a technical move, uh, uh, you know, like was mentioned just at the beginning of the segment. Uh, the RBI has introduced another uh, largest uh, bond auction for the coming Friday. Uh, so on two consecutive weeks, we have uh, the new tenure being auctioned. Uh, the amount is slightly larger, and it's a change to a multiple price format as against a uniform price format. Uh, I'd probably look at it, uh, you know, look at two signals there, or two potential signals that the market would look at. One is uh, the fact that uh, we've seen yields uh, move down uh, significantly and uh, unless uh, we have expectations of a rate cut uh, coming soon uh, there is uh, not as much scope for yields to come down so uh, that's one and uh, second as compared to the time when the uniform price auctions were introduced which was a time when yields were un under pressure we didn't have as much demand and therefore uh, to reduce the risks uh, for uh, the underwriters as well as the investors the uniform price auction format was introduced. Now with relative stability and uh, uh, some enthusiasm coming back into the markets, it's probably the right time to bring back the multiple price format, where of course the risks are slightly higher, but it will probably lead to better price uh, determination uh, for the bonds. So it's pretty much in reaction to that that we've seen the small uptick in yields. Going forward, I think the trajectory of the monsoons is very important to determine what will happen on inflation and therefore uh, on RBI policy front. We think uh, uh, the RBI stays on hold uh, at this policy and probably at least through the remainder of this calendar year. If the monsoons uh, pick up uh, as we have seen over the past few weeks and uh, we don't see as much of a pass through into the uh, inflation and core inflation as the, um... people fear, then maybe a late Q1 uh, rate cut is something which market would look at.